Brought to you by Danville Toyota. We've told you about how hard it is to diagnose and how many patients have spent years searching for answers. Yet, within the medical community, there is a battle raging over how to treat Lyme disease. It is indeed known as the Lyme controversy. The main players at battle, the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society, or ILADS, and the Infectious Diseases Society of America, IDSA. One doctor says uncovering this war is more important than the whole Watergate scandal because we're dealing with people's lives. That we have something going on that needs to be addressed and is being fought, not only ignored, which would be bad enough, it's actually being fought. Dr. Norton Fishman is a member of ILADS. He says Lyme disease is being politicized while thousands, maybe millions, are suffering. You don't have to look. Let's start with testing. No one disputes the tests for Lyme disease are unreliable, but there are two labs ILADS members feel are more accurate. We use a special lab out in California that's been giving us better results. They're picking up about four-fifths of what we think are the cases, as opposed to one-third. The lab is Igenix, more accurate, yet many insurance companies won't cover it. It's not in their network. I paid 715 out of pocket, but I chose to take it. My doctor had already made her diagnosis. You can release your hand. My results? Positive. Same for my sister Lori. It is a certified lab, but Dr. Fishman says some infectious diseases doctors don't give it any merit. They dismiss it and they say the lab's no good because it's giving us a test we don't believe in. Meaning it could prove that there is something called chronic Lyme disease, which IDSA says doesn't exist. Their treatment guidelines say two to four weeks of antibiotics will cure you, and if the symptoms come back down the road, they call that post-Lyme syndrome. We've never been able to prove there's ongoing infection. We think that is more the immunologic response, which is a non-infectious process where they do need treatment with anti-inflammatories, with whatever medicine you can use to decrease the inflammation. ILADS adamantly disagrees. And that's like telling somebody they have post-Alzheimer's. If your symptoms come back, they say you're not cured. It's chronic Lyme. ILADS guidelines say you may need months, even years of antibiotics to wipe it out. So about a month ago, I stopped. Dr. Fishman says the proof is in the two-thirds of his patients who've gotten better. Same with my doctor. I believe the other organization is more concerned with antibiotic resistance. Um, and I'm, I'm concerned about the individual patient. And that makes for a fierce battle over treatment. Some doctors are being hauled before their medical boards for overprescribing, especially for the risky IV antibiotics. They are expensive, they have side effects, they have other risks, and there's no data to show that that does any good. Dr. Brennan says 20 years of scientific studies back up their standards, but ILAD says their research is being ignored. In fact, Connecticut's Attorney General has launched an investigation to see if the IDSA panel who wrote the guidelines did ignore it. One of his concerns, something that's already happening. You yeah. had medicines that weren't covered? Yes. Because it was longer than the standard? Yes. Michelle Spruce is still paying off about a $10,000 debt. My sister Lori had to borrow 8000 from my parents to cover the rest of her IV antibiotics beyond the four-week standard. I went before the insurance board, begged them, uh, with my doctor, begged them to pay for it. They refused. Thanks to my parents, she is cured as a result. But what about the thousands, maybe millions, caught up in this medical melee? We're missing the opportunity to help people get better. I'm seeing that we can do something for most of them. I can't tell you all of them, but most of them. And, uh, and I don't want to be the only one. I, I, you know, I'm not Don Quixote. I do want to add that Dr. Brennan says he has seen a large number of patients who have gotten better without long-term antibiotics. Another problem with this disease, it's grossly underreported. The CDC admits there are at least 10 times as many cases out there, but they only count those with the bullseye rash. Again, I want to stress that you do need to do your own research no matter what your ailment is. Thanks for watching ABC 13's News